We've been consulting with our members about whether the idea of running an annual conference was a good thing to do and we had a very firm message that running an annual conference was an important part of them being a member of a professional body. These professional standards were produced by the ETF in consultation with over 2,000 practitioners. They are very clear, usable and excellent professional standards and I think they give us a tremendously strong underpinning for who we are and what we are. So we've had a theme of the conference for pride in professionalism and I think this is a really important aspect of the role of the society, that our members adhere to a code of practice, they follow professional standards and it's really about all of the great work that our members do within the sector. I think it's great to be able to share ideas, to actually see research uh, that's current and have discussions around it. How else can you actually get all those ideas and all those great practices together and get them out to the wider sort of community if you don't have these conferences? It's been a really good conference, I really enjoyed it. As a teacher and learning manager myself, obviously really interested in other people's perspectives from sort of different, different levels and roles within education and also different institutions. The conference has been great, certainly in terms of networking. It's let us know what's available. It's let us meet some really interesting people and the lunch was good too. How do we as teachers bring together the need to educate people so that they can think, which is the key thing, as well as the ability to do. My question is about what would the measurement of excellence be like in the 21st century now, uh, as we take pride in professionalism, but then how do we, do we categorize it? Should we or should we not? I do like the idea of having resources and information out there for teachers that can tell them what has worked in the past um, to give them a good idea of, of what approaches have risks and what approaches have potential promises. I think one of the real highlights for me today is having a community of 300 members together. It's, uh, it's great for me to meet so many people and we've packed in so much today that I really hope that our members will take something back to their learning places to, um, to help them in their roles. There's a huge amount of passion in the room. This is a very passionate sector. You're a passionate group of individuals and there's a huge amount of warmth for the work that we're doing here and I think that's fantastic. Education saved me. You know, education transformed my life. It gave me meaning and value, and I guess a sense of discipline, and a, sen and a sense of a higher calling and a higher cause and a higher purpose. Because a genuinely believe that educating people is one of the greatest things we can do. And I think if we're serious about that, and I think everyone in this room is, then we want to get serious about understanding how we can direct people's behavior for their benefit, not just for my benefit. It's been a tremendous success today and we now see this has been a regular fixture in the calendar for FE practitioners. Well, I think it's really important that FE is given the status that other um, teaching uh, areas are given and the fact that the ATS is now related to the chartered teaching uh, status is, is, was, was a great way to round off the conference. I think today really highlighted what's, what's out there for teachers as teachers and for teachers as learners as well. It's the very first one and we can look back and say I was there. It brings people together and it creates a community. I'll leave you with this wonderful line from Clayton M. Christensen. Decide what you stand for and then stand for it all the time with gusto. Thank you for listening, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.